All right, today on Eric 62, we are gonna paint the engine, the old classic light blue that you find in uh, the late 50s, early 60s. Then hopefully we're gonna get that all in there and then we will start hooking up the rest of this electrical. While the engine's being painted, I'll get the uh, electrical set up for the dash and stuff like that, so uh, stick around. This is a new ignition switch. Uh, it's about 20 bucks. Here's our old one. Now what happens on this is this does not have a accessory um, connector here. So we just go get a new one and we get our extra accessory on here and then um, that'll work better for our electrics. On this here you'll want to notice this little brass button that is right there. Now that little brass button, when you're going to take your key out, you'll notice that there is a little hole right here. Okay, so when you're going to pull this out, you get a paper clip and bend it straight. You turn the key until it is right above that brass button right there. You push the paper clip through the hole here into the brass button. You turn this a little bit more to the left and then you pull the key uh, section here out. Now I'll just put a little bit of grease in this and put it back into the new one. And all you have to do is just wiggle it around a little bit and it pops right back in. hook up our brake switch wires. What we do is the white wire and the light blue wire. We hook on those onto one connector and then the orange wire is our power for our brakes and we hook that onto another connector. When we're hooking these on, these are what's known as a non-insulated uh, electrical connection. So we get a specific tool for that. So here's a non-insulated connector. Now you notice the little barb that is right there. That's the little barb that will catch inside of these little plastic connectors here. Uh, and so when you're disengaging this, you're going to get this and you're going to push it into that little slot right there. That bends this tab down and then it lets you slide this out. So here's our old connectors. They're still good. They're not brittle or breaking or anything like that. So we'll simply take these guys and We've got to crimp good, don't over crimp it and smash the hell out of it.
Okay, here, when I did this, I forgot to uh, bundle up my two light blue wires and my two uh, dark blue wires, which are my left and right indicator. Okay, this right here is the hazard light. This uh, truck didn't originally come with hazard lights. You can hook them up, but you have to splice more into the wires and a bunch of stuff like that. So I'm not really going to mess with it, but I still have it here and terminaled if I want to do that in the future. And this right here goes to our um, ground for the horn relay. So uh, the, that wire's in there somewhere, and I'll find that and connect that to there. All right, now on horns, I like to um, get a clip on here so I can disconnect it up underneath the dash if necessary because occasionally horns just go off and you can't get them to shut up. So we'll have a quick disconnect in case that happens. On our instrument cluster here, uh, we've got several lights that light up the dash. They'll have the gray wires on them. So sometimes these gray wires, they'll be uh, pretty old and tired, and uh, all you gotta do is go to the electric shop, and you should be able to find these wires here that just have that little tab right on there, and then you can just simply replace these. They also sell those little tabs, and you can um, simply uh, terminal that on the end of the wire also. So what I'm going to do on these guys here, all of these grays wire here, they will all tie into the gray wire on our dash and um, dash lights. So uh, these I'm going to go ahead and connect all together so that it's easier to hook it all up. Okay, when I'm splicing wires together like this, I'll get a razor and I'll just simply cut away some of the coverage here. Then I'll take the other wire right here. Your gray wire is your dash lights. So I take and I'll add about three or four of these gray wires onto the end of this and solder it up and get our shrink wrap on there. Then on the ends, we'll put some connectors. So then I can simply put a connector on here and then I can round my wires and just plug these up. So I'll generally add one or two extra gray wires because typically um, customers want to add something on later or you'll forget the uh, light for the clock or the instrument, you know, anything. So I always add a couple of extra wires for this just in case. Okay, so I'm hard, uh, hooking up the wiper switch motor. Now this was a really simplistic 
uh, type thing here. This connector right here, that just grounds. So when I turn this, all I'm doing is connecting up the ground. Uh, most of your later year ones are uh, going to have three or four wires, but this one only has two wires. One is going to, the power hooks up to the left, and then the grounding wire that will come from the switch will hook up on the right side. Okay, so we went to brotherstrucks.com and we got our power steering bracket set up. Whenever you get stuff like this, make sure that you test it before you paint it or powder coat it because if it doesn't fit your application, you bought it, baby. Can't take it back if you paint it or powder coat it. Uh, so we verified it works. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart and paint it. You'll notice these very harsh edges here. Uh, paint doesn't like to stick to 90 degree edges. So we'll sand those off a little bit, rounding it, and then it'll uh, the paint will stick to it. And we'll just do that a nice standard black. Okay, so these wires right here, these are the radio, CB radio, and a clock. We don't have any of that stuff, but we might stick it in in the future. So we're just going to wrap this up. Uh, on the ends here, though, you don't want to just have something like this hanging up there because if these ends uh, make contact with any kind of metal up there when you just have it sitting in there, then it might short out uh, that fuse. So what we'll do on these is we'll cut the um, end of it off. We'll fold the end over, we'll put a little shrink wrap on there, and then we don't have to worry about making contact in the future. We'll wrap it up and stick it up in there. All right, so this 12 volt ignition, ignition just means that you only have power when you hook it, uh, when you turn the ignition key on, yeah, opposed as the 12 volt fuse, which just means that it goes through a fuse, but there's constant power to it. At any rate, this wire here is power for all of our dash. Now normally, when you have a dash, you're going to have uh, oil pressure and all these gauges up in here that will need power going to them. But in this case, uh, we're not using any of that again because we have these down here, but we still want our fuel gauge to work. So you can see here that all these pink wires here, that's what it would be if you had um, electric volt, speedo, tachometer, etc., etc. But since we don't have any of that, we can hook this right up here to our fuel gauge. And then we're basically done on the inside in here, except for the final button up, which I don't do until after we get all the things hooked up and we check uh, to make sure everything's working right. Then we'll go ahead and button everything up. That's generally a good idea to have uh, one of the old original books because I refer to the or original electric schematics when I'm hooking original to, to old. Uh, so we just want to do things like double check that we are hooking up the fuel gauge correctly. So our electrical is basically all done here in the um, cab uh, as far as we want to take it for right yet. So what we're going to be doing next is getting our engine and transmission in there and uh, then we can get our front end in there and then we can go ahead and finish off this wiring. We'll go ahead and we'll test all of our wiring after we're sure everything's right. Then we'll finish off uh, tying up underneath the cab.
So we're bolting a lot of different things on the engine, but we don't want to necessarily bolt everything on the engine. Generally, the least amount you have on there is going to be the easiest for you. Um, but we're going to want to bolt up our torque converter, maybe get our uh, plate on there, things like that. The more stuff you get now, the easier it'll be. Alright, so we ain't getting to drive today, but we got our engine and transmission in, we got the electrical basically done on the uh, cab, we got the wiring done here in the back, got our power steering pump and all that ready to pretty much go on, so next time, we'll finish this all up, we'll see y'all then.